Imagine getting into your bed tonight, all nice and comfy. You're so tired and surely won't have any problems escaping into the solace of the dream realm. You pull the blankets up, close your eyes, and start thinking about all the things you'd like to do to that annoying asshole, Drew, in accounting. Suddenly, you wake up abruptly after not even realizing you fell asleep. It's been only a few minutes since you went to bed, so you haven't been out for that long. You turn over, fix your pillows, and attempt to drift off once again. But you can't. You're wide awake. You accept defeat, hoping to catch up on sleep the following night. But the same thing keeps happening night after night. Two weeks have passed and you are completely unable to sleep despite being inconceivably exhausted. This continues for the rest of your life, which has been reduced to only a few more years. Finally, your brain is unable to deal with handling even the simplest of functions, and it tosses the flag. It appears you have died purely from a lack of sleep and all the side effects that accompany this morbidity. Hello, Hello fellow deadheads, and welcome to Ghoul School, the channel that explores some of the strangest mysteries in the world and beyond. As a disclaimer, I'd like to mention that I've been told that what I consider to be lighthearted and humorous is vastly different from how normal people think. And to that, I say, what the f*** is so good about being normal? Huh? If you enjoy this video and want to see similar content in the future, um, don't forget to hit subscribe. Let's begin. A genetic prion disease is a malady that causes particular genes to mutate rapidly and unnaturally, causing a variety of different physical and or mental issues depending on the group of prions that are malfunctioning. Some diseases in this class literally eats holes in the brain, given the appearance of a porous sponge. All those tryptophobics out there, hit me up at the comments. I know exactly what that's like, and I'm not a fan. If you've ever heard of mad cow disease, then you're already familiar with prion diseases. In cows, the disease works towards slowly destroying the brain and spinal cord of the cow, leaving it to suffer from a variety of symptoms such as aggression, pain, abnormal behavior, and even cannibalism. Starting to sound familiar? Another well-known prion disease is chronic wasting disease, or CWD. Now, as of now, this disease primarily affects deer and causes symptoms similar to mad cow, such as rage and unusual and aggressive behavior. Luckily, as of now, as of October 16th, 2020, humans aren't known to get sick from the disease, but should humans ever become infected, you can expect a scenario similar to the genesis of a zombie apocalypse. Now brings us to fatal insomnia, which is the lovely disease we're going to talk about today. Fatal insomnia or FI, shares many characteristics of other prion diseases. You got your irritability, you got your weight loss, you got your incoordination, and you got your personality changes. And these were all common accompanying symptoms of fatal insomnia. While disease progression can take several months or even years, it is always fatal and patients typically can expect a 12 to 18 month lifespan after receiving a diagnosis. Luckily, children don't typically get sick from this genetic disease as symptoms onset in one's 40s or 50s. Now, a short little disclaimer here. I don't want anybody getting worried that they might have fatal insomnia just because they weren't sleeping well for the past couple nights. Um, according to my research, this was only found in 200 separate families in all of history. Okay, so it's highly, highly, highly unlikely you have fatal insomnia, but you should still probably be sleeping. Go to bed earlier. In the book, The Family That Couldn't Sleep, author D.T. Max explains that the physiology of the brain of somebody affected by FI resembles that of someone with Alzheimer's in terms of prion and myelin sheath disintegration, with the key difference being sufferers of the former FI are fully aware of their condition, thus some conclude these people suffer even more since they have the anxiety of knowing and being aware of their condition. The book tells of an Italian man named Silvano. One day, while dancing with his mother, Silvano noticed that he was sweating profusely for seemingly no reason. After looking in a mirror, he noticed his pupils were the size of a pen dot. Having a relative to have died of fatal insomnia in the past, 
Silvana knew exactly what was happening to him. Imagine that realization. Like, imagine having a family member that died of that in the past, and, I mean, geez, like, every night that I can't sleep, I'll be thinking about that. It'd probably become some sort of self-fulfilling prophecy for me. That's just the way my amygdala overactive brain works. Let's move on. Rather than just giving up and dying, Silvana wanted to fully understand the disease and at least go down with the fight, so to speak. With the help of Ignazio, a man who married into the family, Silvana went to a neurological institute seeking answers. He wanted to be studied as thoroughly as possible and even offered his brain for science once he passes. Um, so Silvano pretty much knew that he was a goner. He really only wanted to go to the institute to be observed, not so much be treated, because I think he kind of knew that there was nothing they can do for him, unfortunately. And after conducting various tests, it was discovered that Silvano's EEG results revealed his brain waves to be not like anything previously seen in medical literature. The scan did, however, show that he shared many characteristics of animals infected with other prion diseases, such as mad cow and CWD. In another case, Harvard Law student Sonia Vallab noticed her mother was falling ill, experiencing a strange and abrupt onset of symptoms such as poor eyesight, spasms, convulsions, and even speaking in tongues. If there is any sort of medical symptom of demonic possession, Speaking in tongues, I think, would be the one, that would be the one to get me going. That would be the one to uh, make me think that maybe this isn't even a medical issue. But the most severe symptom, and the one that ultimately led to her demise, was the unrelenting insomnia. Within 10 years, Sonia's mother was on full life support and looked like she spent every waking moment, which was every single moment, since she wasn't sleeping, feeling completely tortured with exhaustion and pain. When her mother eventually passed away at age 52, the doctor informed Sonia that the disease was genetic. Dr. Pietro Cortelli. Pietro Cortelli. Don't be fooled by the red hair. I'm Italian as fuck. Dr. Pietro Cortelli, a doctor working on the case of another one of Sonia's family members, described the experience of the disease as exactly what you can feel if you get a sleep attack when you're driving. You know, when you fall asleep very briefly and then you're shot awake just by the momentum of the car or whatever it is, just being aware that you're in a moving vehicle. It was like that for this lady and every other sufferer with the disease. It's like that every moment you try to fall asleep. Some sufferers of the disorder may drift into a semi-sleep-like state, but don't seem to reach beyond REM sleep to stages 3 and 4, which are known to be the most restorative and perhaps the most important stages of sleep. You may expect doctors to treat these patients with sleeping pills, but they did try and no such luck. Sleeping medications like Ambien and other even stronger sedatives don't work because, well, they're sedatives. Being sedated or unconscious doesn't give you the same benefits of restorative deep sleep. So while they were able to knock out the patient, so to speak, they weren't able to get them to enter those more restorative stages of sleep past REM. So these people were stuck in REM, almost like a semi-lucid dreaming state every time they try to sleep. You know how it is when you don't sleep well. It doesn't take very long for you to start losing it. After learning about her inherited disease, Valab quit her consulting job and began devoting her life towards understanding the disease at only 33 years old. She took several biology classes at MIT, as well as attending a Harvard Extension School, which I assume is some kind of branch campus. I don't know. I did not go to Harvard. Both her and her husband completely switched career paths and are pursuing their PhDs in biology. So her husband went all in on this too. Shout out to that guy. The Valabs, Valabas, Valabs, eventually founded the Prion Alliance, a nonprofit group operating with the intent to eradicate or at least treat the symptoms of this horrible malady. Unfortunately, as of writing this, again, October 16th, 2020, most sufferers are destined to an early death with their last years being just about as unpleasant as you can imagine. And though the Prion Alliance was founded uh, years ago, unfortunately there is still not yet a, a cure for the disease, nor, I believe, is there any cure for any sort of Prion disease, because I believe the way these diseases work is they kind of get in there on the DNA and they just kind of do a little of that, you know, and uh, it's not good for your DNA to do that, so. But like I said earlier, thankfully, this only affects 200 families worldwide. At least, that's what's recorded. 
Hey again guys, thank you for checking out this story with me, and I really hope you enjoyed it, um, although a little morbid, but that's what this channel is all about. Have you ever heard of anybody with FI, fatal insomnia, or really any prion disease? It's pretty uncommon, and if you know somebody who has one, you're probably either lying or you're in 0.01% of the population. But regardless, I'd like to hear from you in the comments down below. I hope to produce more content like this, uh, and more frequently looking forward so if you enjoyed the video please like it click the subscribe button maybe even hit the bell i know not a lot of people do that i don't i never do so if you don't it's karma for me thanks again for watching and hopefully you can all get a good night's sleep tonight but if you don't you just might have fatal insomnia